What up, LK Mafia? It's your boy, Artie Kicks, and just like that, we back with another one. All right, y'all, so a couple of days ago, in the comment section of one of my videos and one of my reactions that I did to those ghost stories, um, people were commenting, they were like, yo, you need to check out Mr. Nightmares. You know, he got some pretty good videos. I was like, okay, I I'll do that. And this is one right here he has, and it's called Three Creepy True School Lockdown Stories. I don't know what to think. I, was, I can only imagine lockdowns happening when, when either there's a school shooter or a mass shooter on the loose or even an es escape prisoner. Like, that's the only time I can imagine, like, lockdowns happening. But who knows what all could cause lockdowns. And this is three creepy stories. Creepy stories. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, we just gonna get into this. I ain't gonna hold y'all no more. Y'all ready? I'm ready. <sighs> Let's go. Number one. It was a typical boring day in calculus, only it was Friday, 7th period, meaning the week was almost over and spring break would finally be upon us, so everybody was getting antsy in their seats, I could tell. We didn't have a test that day like a lot of my friends did with their other teachers, so our teacher in the middle of class just decided to start playing games with us on Sporkle.com. He was a very laid-back teacher like that. As we were doing some brand logo quiz on Sporkle, I remember the exact moment it happened. Right after my friend answered a question, I remember the exact answer too, Adidas. The Dean's voice came through the loudspeaker. He sounded panicked and frantic as he told all the teachers this was not a drill and to go into lockdown. I actually got the chills and I got goosebumps on my arms as our usually laid back teacher too seemed panicked as he ran to turn off the lights and ushered us to the back corner of the room. What? We all sat in silence for about two minutes, and then the usual buzzing that came from a panel in the back of the room ceased, indicating that the school must have cut all the power. What? We all looked at each other, realizing this must be serious. Oh my goodness. A few more minutes of waiting later, we heard a man screaming at the top of his lungs coming down the hallway. Two girls in the class actually started crying, which made all of us even more scared. As the screaming got closer to the classroom, the lunatic sounding man started banging on the lockers while screaming, I'll kill all of you. What? It was at that moment that I started to fear for my life. My teacher shushed us as we all looked at each other to see our peers reactions. The banging then moved from the lockers to our classroom door. And that's when one of the crying girls screamed no. The banging on the door only grew worse as the man started screaming, open up. What? Two of the girls in the class were crying out loud now. Stupid. It felt like an eternity that that man was pounding at the door. But eventually, he finally continued down the hallway, screaming like a mentally insane person until we could not hear him anymore. What the heck? I couldn't imagine. Like, how does this happen? Like... How does the teacher tell you to go into lockdown? Like, what? How does, I don't understand. I'm trying to paint the picture in my head of the scenario as it unfolded. Like, what's the beginning stages of this? Does the, does this crazed man, is he like in the proximity in the area? was it on the news and the kids the students just didn't hear about it they said that he was being you know they said that they were tracking him to the school and I, I, like and did, did, did somebody call the school call the principal and say hey you need to go into lockdown or at least lock your students down like did they see the man already approaching the school and it was too late to close the doors so everybody just runs and hides into their rooms and then the teacher comes on the intercom like how does this happen how does it get to this point or was the stage was it set up so that the students the teachers the the whole faculty i think i, did I say that word right <laughs> you know what i meant like was it supposed to be a test for them to see if they're gonna, to see if they will follow the proper procedures. I don't know, man. That, that would be messed up. That would be so messed up. I'd say 10 minutes later, though it felt like half an hour given the situation, the Dean came back on the loudspeaker explaining the situation, which was surprising for him to do. 
He explained that some apparently mentally unstable person entered the building and assaulted the woman sitting at the front desk, causing her to flee the building screaming, and staff wasn't sure if the man was armed or not. Now this was before the school had cameras or could afford proper security, so the school was wide open to something like this happening. The staff had done a sweep of all the hallways and classrooms and couldn't find him, so the dean instructed the teachers to resume teaching but to keep all the doors locked and to not let any students leave for any reasons. What? The most disturbing part, however, is that one of the janitors working the night shift found the man sleeping in one of the storage closets near the back end of the school, and according to rumors that were spread by my peers, sticking out of his pocket was a 44 Magnum. The janitor must have done something stupid to wake him up, for example, leaving the closet door open, because by the time a police officer could arrive on the scene, the man was gone. My entire class, as far as I know, to this day, has no idea if this man was ever found, but I like to think that right now, he's being given the proper help that he needs. Are you serious? That happened? That's crazy. Oh my god. My school has two lunch periods. First lunch period is for all 6th graders and some 7th graders. Okay. The second lunch period is for the other half of the 7th graders and all 8th graders. The lockdown happened in the beginning of October. The day the lockdown occurred, it was overcast and rainy. During the first lunch period, I heard four loud booms. Oh. I personally thought it was thunder, but the entire lunch crowd started screaming. I was thinking those kids were just serious pussies, but the campus security came in and started yelling at people to go into the multi-purpose room, and the kids who were in line buying lunch had to throw out their lunch and come inside. Me and some friends went inside the room along with a huge group of other kids. Everyone was curious as to what was happening. Our multi-purpose room is huge, and the back wall of the room is made of see-through glass. Yo, that looks almost exactly like my elementary school's cafeteria. There was a stage like that, and we had, uh, well, we didn't have picnic-style tables, but we had tables kind of lined up similar to this. Dang. And then, like, that's the door to go out that way to, like, the main hall, but you can also come in on this side, too. There's a lot of similarities. It's not perfect, but it's uh, so spot on. It looked like it's a little wider, too, though. When me and my friends were rushed inside the campus, security was covering the glass with the curtains, and there were adults at every exit. My friend Eric was curious, as well as the rest of us, so he asked one of the adults what was going on. When he came back, he said, You know how right in front of TMS there's those houses? I replied, Yeah. There's this mentally disabled crazy man that barricaded himself in front of his house, and he's threatening to commit suicide and kill the cops if he's evicted. He was walking around outside of school watching kids in a weird way, Eric told us. It turned out the man was also a registered sex offender, making matters worse. Oh my goodness. We were stuck in the multi-purpose room for a whole hour, taking up two periods. After the whole thing was settled, we were escorted to our classrooms one by one. I later found out that the man lives next to my friend Brandy, who told me about the previous Halloween when she saw the same man at his window cutting his arm and writing in his own blood, don't come here or I'll kill you on his window. Of course, being Halloween, people, including Brandy, assumed it was just for the holiday. But after this horrific incident, we knew this man was mental, and we're glad he never got near us. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, yo, I have a story too. Should I tell my story? If I react to another video like this from this guy that have these type of stories, I will share a story of my next door neighbor who's actually in jail right now, in prison, with a life sentence. Woo! I'll tell y'all that story. It's a crazy, creepy one too. Yo, damn. <laughs> He's mental, and we're glad he never got near us. All right, y'all, this is the last one. I'm 22 years old, fresh out of college, and I recently got a job at my old high school as a sort of computer intern in the school basement. 
The basement of the school is very messy and disorganized, but there is a small three-person office that's actually very nice down there. It has three nice big desks, two mini fridges, a flat screen TV mounted on the wall, and oh so satisfying air conditioning, a luxury the students and teachers cannot enjoy in the school. Nice. And of course all the school servers and other computery stuff. Hmm. I got the job because three of my old computer teachers flat out adored me. I could actually consider them as real friends, not just teacher figures. Nice. So they all helped tremendously in landing me this job. It's been great. Until something that happened a few weeks ago. Uh oh. My two co-workers that shared the office with me, Dave and Gary, weren't in the office at the time. They were upstairs working on papers or whatever. I was eating my sandwich during my lunch break when I got a phone call from one of the women in the front office telling me the school was on lockdown and that somebody possibly armed had entered the school. There wasn't much that I could do other than turn off the lights because, surprisingly, as nice as this little office was, it didn't have an actual door to it, just a big opening, and the door to the whole basement didn't even have a working lock. Oh, no. For my own safety, I did turn off all the lights in the office and my computer screen. Good. I kept my phone on the desk, texting both Gary and Dave, but they wouldn't respond. Whoa. I sat down there in the dark, playing games on my phone for like 20 minutes waiting for the call from up front to tell me to resume working. I had no idea what was happening. I couldn't hear what was going on upstairs from down here. But I was not allowed to make any calls until I was informed that the lockdown was over. Then, the noisy basement door opened. As the creaking echoed across the basement and into my office, I sat up from my seat, wondering if I should call out Gary or Dave. No. I was eager to get some info from them. Someone then came running down the stairs, and their footsteps were approaching my office. I pushed away my chair and crawled under my desk. Somebody entered the office, but did not turn on the lights. There was just silence. I can't even describe the fear I was experiencing. I felt like if I made one sudden noise, I'd be a dead man. Suddenly, my phone dinged as I got a text message. I felt my entire world shrivel up and die at that one moment as I clenched my teeth in fear. Boy, how did you not have your phone on silent? Mute completely. Oh my goodness. Footsteps suddenly moved closer to me until I finally dove out from under the desk in capitulation, begging whoever it was not to kill me. And just then, someone grabbed my arm and pulled me up. It was some guy in a red plaid button-up jeans and a reddish black cap. He told me, it's okay, I'm just down here hiding with you. What's going on up there? I whispered to him. He kind of ignored my question and asked me if there's an exit down here. I told him, yeah, around that way. Before he could do anything else, I asked him, who are you? There was a brief moment of silence. Before he started explaining he was coming in to pick up his son, when a teacher told him to hide. After his explanation, I checked my phone and saw the text I received was from Dave. It said, Dude, this is fucking crazy. Some guy with a gun shot Mr. Buckley. He's wearing a red shirt and a hat. Whatever you do, don't come upstairs. I was about to reread that text out loud to the man until I realized. I looked up and felt my stomach sink. The man seemed to catch on to my suspicious stare. Panicking, all I could think to do was to run for the upstairs. A gunshot echoed through the basement and I could hear the bullet ricochet off something metal in the darkness. But thank God the bullet missed me and I made it upstairs. Fortunately, police were waiting at all exits, including the basement exit, and caught the man the second he opened the door. More good news, our teacher Mr. Buckley survived the gunshot it was later determined that the man and Mr. Buckley had some beef for whatever reason, but that was never revealed. All we know is that Mr. Buckley couldn't have done anything that would have warranted this kind of reaction. And I know that the sound of that gunshot will forever echo in my mind. What? Somebody that might be having beef with somebody, they came after that person. Their sole intention was only really to harm that one person. 
So for him to go downstairs and be like, "You do, don't worry, I'm I'm coming down here to hide with you," like his story sounded believable. But no, really, he ran down there to get away. And then when he started asking questions, like, "Yo, is there an escape? Is there another door, a way out of here?" Yo, this is crazy. Yo, to think that this stuff, they say these are true stories, to think that any of these things actually happen. Wow. But yeah, I want to hear back from you guys. Like, what do you think? Which one of these stories do you feel like was the most believable? And which one would have tripped you out the most? Like, which one do you felt like you could have been in that scenario? <sighs> I don't know. I kind of put myself in all of them. I was like so tuned in. I felt like I could have been there for any of these. But yeah. Y'all know what time it is. If you like this reaction, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more. As always, the link to the is going to be down in the description box below. If you haven't already, make sure you follow your boy right here on the Grandman Twitter at Art Kicks. Till the next one.